My name is Marley Norton. I'm the lead interaction designer at Gambit, the Singapore MIT Gambit Game Lab. Um, I sort of got into video games through a sort of circuitous route. I think I was always looking for something that was both um, left-brained and right-brained. You know, I liked my science, I liked my math, but I also liked, you know, creative sorts of things. Um, you know, video games were one of those things that, like, I'd always liked video games, but I never really thought about, you know, that people make them. That's something you do for a living. People can have careers in that. So um, when that occurred to me, which, you know, wasn't until grad school, um, I started getting really heavily involved in video game design, stuff like that, particularly um, educational games. And um, games with new technology, um, wacky interfaces, augmented reality, I really like too. So our game was Poikalia. That was sort of part of an ongoing research collaboration with the Education Arcade. Um, they have some questions they're exploring about the interplay between learning transfer and narrative. Um, the first game in this series that was sort of looking at this question was um, Wushin Waker, which actually happened last summer. <clears throat> And this is sort of the follow-up experiment to that, where basically it's to take one educational game and have a version um, with narrative cutscenes and a version without narrative cutscenes, and then they're going to um, take it into classrooms and actually do some testing with it um, to see how um, some, some students will play one version, some students will play the other version, and see how that affects um, learning the content. Um, in our case, the content was um, additive and subtractive color theory. If, if you're not familiar with it, um, additive color theory is um, basically all colors come together to create white. Um, this is the kind of um, color combination that happens if you're using light. So if you've ever done any sort of um, lighting design for theater or something like that, this is very, you know, very natural to you. Um, subtractive is um, what they tend to um, teach in, in art class um, when you're, you know, in elementary school or something like that, where you're mixing paints together. Um, and that's the one where all colors coming together, they get darker, they turn into black. Um, and the particular model we were trying to teach was um, um, RGB, um, red, green, blue are our primary colors for additive color theory, and cyan, yellow, and magenta are the primary colors for subtractive color theory. It sounds, I'm, I'm making it sound so easy now, but um, this actually took us a long time to, get our, to wrap our heads around, um, because we had to learn this too. Um, you know, whenever you're doing an educational game, you have to start out by like making sure everyone on the team, um, you know, from the you know from the director to the researcher to the QA to the producer to the artist to the audio guy, everyone actually understands what's going on. Because how can we teach something that we can't actually, you know, that we don't understand ourselves? That was probably the hardest thing. Um, the other thing I was really worried about was actually the heart of our research question, which was. Um, how to have a story which was removable within the within the time frame we had. You know, these these prototypes are developed over nine weeks, where the first week is all about jet lag and orientation. So really, it's more like eight weeks. Um, and then you know we have QA at the end, so maybe really it's more like seven weeks. And you know, yeah, so that that time just gets whittled away. And um, our cutscenes were in the form of these comic book panels, and so we had to actually. Um, come up with a story and make sure it was integrated with our mechanics, but not so tightly that if you got the version without the the story, you, you wouldn't be able to play. You had to be able to play it both ways, but it needed to have that extra dimension if the story was there. And then the story had to be written, and then it had to be drawn, and then it had to be colored, and that turns out to be a really lengthy process. So I have to admit, I was, I was chewing my nails a bit by the end. So the Education Arcade actually held the research question. They're the ones who are actually going to carry out the experiment when we're done. Um, we had two um, product owners, that's what we call them. Um, the, one of the directors of the Education Arcade, um, Scott Osterweil was one, and Jason Haas was the other. Um, Scott, being the director, obviously didn't have a lot of time, so it was Jason who was sort of in there in the trenches with us. Um, we'd see him sometimes multiple times a day. Um, he, was, he was very gracious. Sometimes I was worried we were taking a little too much of his time, but um, he was right in there with us. And he also wrote the story for us as well. Um, I was really looking forward to working on this with them, actually. I used to work um, not in the Education Arcade, but um, in their sister lab, um, the Teacher Education Program. Um, and when I did that, I actually sat right next to Jason. Um, our desks were next to each other, so if we both got up at the same time, our, our chairs would bump. Um, and he was, a, he was a great guy, and I was always kind of curious about what they were working on, so it was nice to finally have this chance, ironically, when we work farther apart now, to finally come together and do a project together. I was really happy with our game. Um, it's, 
it's actually fun. Um, I personally enjoy playing the game, and that's saying a lot because um, whenever you work on a video game, you know, everyone thinks, oh, it's so great to work in video games. It's so fun. You get to play video games all day. I will tell you the secret. Once you've been working on a video game that intensely for that long, you get really, really sick of it. You don't ever want to see it ever again. You just get, you get tired of it, you know? And it really has nothing to do with how, how good a job you did. It's just, you know, you're, you're ready to move on. Um, but Point Play was a game I never really got tired of. Um, I was also really proud of the, um, the number of levels we got in. For this game, we have 24 levels. And um, depending on how naturally these puzzles come to you, there's between um, 30 and 90 minutes of gameplay there, which is just a crazy amount of content for us. So I was particularly proud of my team for that.